Congressional Republicans are pushing back against the president after his announcement that he'd withdraw U.S. troops from northern Syria, exposing our Kurdish allies to possible slaughter. This video shows American forces leaving the area near the Turkish border. They're clearing the way for an expected attack from Turkey on Kurdish fighters who were crucial in the effort to defeat ISIS. Members of both parties are calling the move a major mistake, which could embolden ISIS and dangerously erode America's ability to form alliances in the future. Lee Jiang reports. We have to bring our people back home. During a briefing with military leaders last night, President Trump defended his decision to withdraw American troops from northern Syria. We were down to very few soldiers in Syria. We had 50 in the region that you're talking about, 50 soldiers. And they've been already moved out. These images capture the U.S. troops deserting observation posts and abandoning the U.S. backed Kurdish forces that have shouldered much of the fight against ISIS. Too many times America in the past has left our allies behind. Some of the president's staunchest Republican allies in Congress wasted no time condemning his decision. Pat Toomey called it a threat to our national security. Liz Cheney described it as a catastrophic mistake. And Lindsey Graham said it's a shot in the arm to the bad guys, devastating for the good guys. Even Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the move would increase the risk that ISIS and other terrorist groups regroup. I respect both opinions. The problem with the other opinion is, when do we leave? When do we leave? We're going to stay there forever? The fear of a resurgence by ISIS stems partly from the possibility that an attack by Turkey could jeopardize the security of prisons controlled by the Kurds that hold roughly 10,000 ISIS prisoners, about 2,500 of whom are highly dangerous foreign fighters. The White House statement Sunday said Turkey would take custody of foreign fighters. After first saying Turkey will soon be moving forward with its long-planned operation in northern Syria, President Trump changed his tune, tweeting, If Turkey does anything that I, in my great and unmatched wisdom, consider to be off-limits, I will totally obliterate the economy of Turkey. Weija Jang is joining us now from the White House. Uh, so, Weija, explain a bit about our relationship with the Kurds, especially when it comes to fighting ISIS. Sure. This is a region in Syria that the government essentially abandoned uh, at the height of the conflict there to focus on other areas where they were concerned about rebels. So the U.S. Uh, actually partnered up with the Kurds in a different fight against ISIS, and they've been battling together and making uh, quite a bit of progress. Um, and so that's why, the, you know, they're essentially brothers on this front and, and taking uh, those terrorists and holding them. And so um, that's why you see so much pushback now that this mentality of leaving is sort of like use them and lose them. And the leader of the Kurds is saying, yes, we have made substantial progress um, in our mission to defeat ISIS. But he is worried and warning, along with many uh, Republicans here in the in the U.S., that all of that progress could be erased if, um, you know, without America's support. And so that's why we're seeing so much pushback against the president's decision here, because uh, these are our partners. These are people that, you know, um, have shed most of the blood in this. Uh, in fact, the leader of the Kurds said 11,000 soldiers have lost their lives in this fight. And now it feels to them like a betrayal, like all of a sudden uh, the U.S. troops are leaving at the request, at the uh, order of the president. Ouija, as you point out uh, in your reporting, the president has been tweeting about this, uh, including that tweet where he promised to obliterate the Turkish economy if they did anything that was not to his liking. But he's been tweeting a lot about it this morning as well. And I wonder, yeah. uh, it does appear, to, I, don't, I wonder what White House sources are telling you, because all of a sudden the blowback from not just Democrats this time, you've got Republicans and in some cases some very staunch allies of the president who have been with him through thick and thin, like Lindsey Graham like uh, Mitch McConnell, coming out and saying this was the wrong thing to do. And I wonder uh, who is advising, who was advising the president on this decision? Because the president yesterday say he sp said he spoke to a lot of people. It doesn't seem like he spoke to members of his own party that are on Capitol Hill. You know, Vlad, uh, President Trump actually brought this idea of withdrawing troops from Syria up. He even acknowledged this back in December. 
and shortly after, um, you have two key members of his administration who would be those voices resigning. Secretary of Defense James Mattis, uh, who left for a variety of reasons, but one of which was because they butted heads um, about the U.S. policy in Syria, and also Brett McGurk, the former U.S. Special Envoy to counter ISIS there, who has been extremely vocal um, talking about the president's decision. In fact, I pulled this because I think it's very telling as somebody who used to advise him and watching this unfold and now saying that, um, that, 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 that he makes impulsive decisions with no knowledge or deliberation about President Trump. Uh, he also said they, meaning ISIS uh, prisoners, are all being held by the Syria Democratic Forces, the Kurds, which Trump just served up to Turkey. And so this is someone with direct knowledge of the situation there who left because President Trump was not listening to their advice. Um, but to your point, Vlad, you know, we have learned um, through different conversations with former uh, senior advisors to the president, namely our White House producer, Finn Gomez, who has new reporting, that they've been watching and they are worried. They are concerned that fewer and fewer voices are left over here to advise the president, um, not only on matters of foreign policy like here, but also, uh, you know, on this impeachment inquiry that is hanging over the White House and will not go away, uh, likely, until through the election. And so there's deep concern about what the president is doing and the fact that he is a one-man band. That's not new. The difference, though, I think, is his comfort level. And now he's well into his first term. In the beginning, he was still getting his sea legs. But now the president feels uh, that he has this authority and power, and he is comfortable with it and has no issues making these decisions, even if his fiercest allies and his top advisors are warning him against them. All right, Ouija, thank you very much. Sure.